I finally finished this 12 hour JavaScript tutorial. I think I can finally start programming. Wait, so how do I program? I think I need to watch another tutorial. Hell, lost in loops and lines. Ah, another day, another video idea to steal. Today, we're gonna talk about tutorial hell and how to escape it, because it looks like a lot of you are suffering from this. And don't worry, I'm a veteran when it comes to tutorial hell. I was just like most of you. I couldn't program anything without a tutorial holding my hand. What is tutorial hell's law? Well, in simple terms, you can't program anything unless you have a tutorial helping you out. Tutorial hell is kind of like having training wheels, but the moment you take off the training wheels, you can't do anything. Aww. Now, before we go any further, let's test if you're suffering from a bad case of tutorial hell. Are you always relying on tutorials? Yes. Do you have a fear of starting projects without guidance? Yes. Do you have a lack of confidence in skills? Do you have the rare condition called Ligma? If you said yes to all of these, I hate to break the bad news, but you have a chronic case of skill issues. What's wrong with tutorial hell, Sloth? Well, buddy, you're not always gonna have tutorials. I mean, for beginner stuff and common problems, yeah, you'll have tutorials, but that's basically it. Once you start doing some more advanced and unique problems, you're not going to find a tutorial. The best thing you'll have is documentation. And even then, it might not help. I've had problems where I had to go through a GitHub form, and the only comments in that form were people asking if anyone has solved it. And if your problem leads you to a Quora form, I'm sorry. When you're stuck in tutorial hell, you're essentially following a script. But programming, especially in a professional setting, it's pretty unscripted. You're kind of improvising everything. They expect you to take a problem, analyze it and come up with a solution on your own. They're not gonna pay you to just watch tutorials sometimes. So basically, if you're stuck in tutorial hell, you're useless as a programmer and AI has already replaced you. No big deal. How do you escape tutorial hell? Build stuff. Yep, that's basically it. Thanks for watching everybody. <laughs> okay, besides that obvious answer, to escape tutorial hell, you need to look at tutorials differently. You don't have to stop using tutorials altogether. I repeat, you don't have to stop using tutorials. What you really have to do is use tutorials more effectively. So what does that mean? Well, luckily for you, let me share my ultimate three-step plan to escaping tutorial hell like an alpha. I call it gs. Yeah, I need to work on that. Now, in order to use my super awesome 10 out of 10 plan, you have to at least know the basics of programming. If you don't know the basics like variables, loops, conditionals, functions, <laughs> Go learn those first. You can't build your own project without the fundamentals. Sloth, where can I learn programming fundamentals? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. You can use today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform where you learn by doing. Wait a minute, isn't this just tutorials? Won't I get stuck in tutorial hell? No. Brilliant teaches you in a way that'll actually get you out of tutorial hell. They offer thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. So there has to be something for you. Brilliant is designed to be effective. Each lesson is designed with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts. And it's a method that's proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Not only that, but all the content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. One of the great things about Brilliant is that they believe in problem solving, not memorizing. And problem solving is a critical skill to get you out of tutorial hell. A course that I recommend from Brilliant is called Thinking in Code, and it's mainly about teaching teaching you problem solving techniques specifically about programming. And it's something I wish I had when I was learning to program because it'll help you develop your mind to think like a programmer. So if Brilliant sounds like the learning platform for you and you'd like to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash the coding sloth or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. All right, now that all the haters left, let's start with step one. Get a project idea, obviously. Escaping tutorial hell means building something without a tutorial. So you should have an idea of what to build. I don't know what to build, Sloth. Well, figure it out. I'm not your dad. I'm kidding. I love you all. Go watch my project video or check out Sloth Bites. What? You don't know what Sloth Bites is? What's wrong with you? It's only the greatest programming newsletter. Anyways, you can just Google something like projects in whatever language you're using. Your project doesn't have to be complex and it doesn't have to be unique. Right now, your goal is to learn how to program, not change the world. You got your project idea. Cool. Step two, set clear goals. Define what you want to achieve. I hate to say it, 
but winging it is not going to help in this situation. You need a purpose because without purpose, what's the point of living? Identify a tangible outcome. Before starting a project, you need a tangible outcome. Ask yourself, what do I want to accomplish? I want to learn how to code better. Yeah, no duh. Besides learning how to code better, did you want to make something specific? A game, a website, what's the goal? This makes it so even if you use a tutorial or Google something, you know why you're doing this. Step three, start small. Start with really small steps. I'm talking literally step by step. Step one, open up your code editor. Step two, create the project file. You get the point. Doing it this way tricks your brain into thinking you are being productive and it'll make you feel like a genius. You'll think that you could program anything and it's going to make it so you don't quit because in your head you completed a lot of small steps when in reality you did the bare minimum. Awesome. And as you're doing that, turn the steps into questions. So let's say you had step one as starting up the project. Change it into how do I start a project in whatever language you're doing? Or you had something like Step two, add a button. Frame it as how do I add a button? Doing it this way will reinforce what you're learning and you'll have a Google search ready when you're stuck. The key is to build incrementally. Slowly make it complex. Don't think about the end goal. Think of what you need to do in between. This is why I like doing step by step because it does exactly that. What if I get stuck and I don't know what to build or I don't know how to build it? Use a tutorial or Google it. I told you, you can still use tutorials. They're not banned, but only use tutorials as reference points. This is really important, so pay attention. The goal here is to not depend on tutorials. Let's say you're stuck. The first thing you should do is look up a tutorial, is what someone who's stuck in tutorial hell would say. The first step is obviously to figure it out on your own. If you're stuck on something for one second and immediately go to a tutorial, you're doing this wrong. I'd say you should spend at least 10 minutes trying to figure out the problem, and if you don't make any progress, then watch a tutorial or Google something. But if you make progress within that time, keep going going until you're stuck. Okay, so you do need a tutorial. Don't just blindly copy and paste the code. That's just not good for you. You're not going to learn anything. Take the time to understand why the code works and how it fits into your project. And if you're using something like ChatGPT, don't just ask for the solution. Tell the AI to explain the solution to you in a step-by-step -step way. Sloth, I keep using ChatGPT. I keep Googling and I keep watching tutorials. Is that bad? Well, it depends. Are you relying on these tutorials or are you just using them? Relying on tutorials means complete dependency. You're following a tutorial step by step without understanding the concepts. If you're directly copying code without making any modifications, you're relying on the tutorial. And if you're using a tutorial as a reference point, you're not depending on it. You're just using the tutorial to understand specific concepts, not the entire thing. It's a pretty small difference, but that difference gets you out of tutorial hell. So in my opinion, this could be completely wrong by the way, using tutorials to learn specific concepts or techniques techniques is fine. It's completely normal. You're a beginner, you're not a pro, but don't rely on them to build your entire project. Apply what you learn by implementing it in your own way. Look up specific solutions when you need help, but try to implement them on your own first. This isn't school. You're allowed to search up answers. Nothing bad is going to happen to you if you copy and paste code. Yeah, so uh, copy and paste all the code you want, watch tutorials, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!